following is a paid program for Passionist Communications. Welcome, everyone, to our celebration of the Sunday Mass, a ministry of the Passionist community. As always, my name is Father Paul. It is May 26th, the sixth Sunday of Easter, and today is a sponsored Mass. Our sponsor is Josephine E. Giordano, and her special intention for the Mass is for herself because this is the 95th celebration of her birthday. So, Josephine... Happy birthday, and we're very glad that you chose us to celebrate with. Um, our presider today is Father James O'Shea, the provincial of the Passionist community here in the East, uh, and we're very glad to have him here to celebrating with us today. So if you have your prayer guide, take it out. Turn to the sixth Sunday of Easter, or page 91, the beginning of Mass, and let us begin our celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, be with you all. And, with your spirit. and so as we celebrate this Sunday and Easter, we continue to celebrate the great gift of life that God continues to give us, a life that is so abundant that it continues to change us and transform us. And Jesus in the gospel today will tell us not to let our hearts be troubled, but rather to rest in that abundant life of God that triumphs even over death. And so let's begin the Eucharist today by asking the Lord to give us our own peace, to give us healing, and to give us forgiveness. And Lord Jesus, you are life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are joy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us for our sins, and bring all of us one day to everlasting life. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was also called Barsabas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul 
who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our dwelling place with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Or afraid. You heard me tell you I'm going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, 
you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you all this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Strange words to say to a group of people who have been through so much, these disciples of Jesus. They've had this experience of Jesus being alive and this experience of resurrection and the experiences that they have, but now they're getting ready to let go of Jesus. That these experiences of him with them in this resurrected life will soon be over. And that the gospel today, they, they, they're wrestling with this. That they'll no longer have this certainty of the presence of Jesus that in a sense they'll be on their own, struggling to figure this out. And so Jesus' words seem rather strange. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. It seems almost counterintuitive. I was visiting a, a woman recently in the hospital, and she has a neurological disease. And it's one of these diseases that, and she knows well that it, it's a progressive disease, and it will take her life. And she's in one of those phases of, of, of the transitions where it's beginning to become difficult for her to breathe. And so she's, she was a very vivacious, strong woman. She was active and, and did extraordinary things. And now she's principally confined to a bed. And she has these moments where increasingly it becomes difficult just to breathe. That's the most frightening time for her, when she feels like she just can't breathe. She can't catch her breath. And she wonders where that's going to lead. But she said she began to do something, a very simple thing she learned as a child, that when she's in this really, this moment where life seems to be closing in on her, when she's filled with this sense of fear, that she simply says the Hail Mary, the prayer that she learned as a little girl. And she said, for whatever reason, as she says that prayer and just says it as best she can, the panic subsides and she suddenly feels okay. And the moment and the lack of breath passes, and she returns back to her state. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor be afraid. What Jesus is speaking about today is not something, as, as Jesus says clearly, the world doesn't give that to us. Frequently, the circumstances of our life, the struggles of our life, the stresses of our life, it doesn't give us peace. It doesn't often give us what helps us to even feel unafraid, but rather the opposite. This is a gift from God. This is a divine gift. It's, it's, it's a fruit of resurrection. It's a, it's a fruit of knowing that in the end, in any moment of our life, somehow life always will triumph. Always. Even in death. That life will always triumph. This is a gift that we can't find anywhere from the Spirit. Do not be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Receive my peace. My Father and I will dwell in you. So as we celebrate this Easter Eucharist today, may we celebrate that gift. Sometimes we misplace it. Sometimes we, we, we lose it because life throws us off. And so much of life can throw us off. And yet we're invited to return to it. Something you can't find, you have it. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. The Father and I will make our dwelling place with you. Peace. Peace. And as we continue this Easter journey, we pray with voices singing a new song to our God with joy, that God will hear us, and so we confidently place our prayers before God. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church that we will always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks us in the reason and asks us the reason for our hope and that we will always do it with gentleness and reverence. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the sponsor of our mass today, Josephine E. Giordano, on her 95th birthday. May God's blessings be upon her today and always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our television parishioners that will be placed next to the altar, and for Marie Sanduzzi, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In loving God, your Son has called us to be his friends. And so in this friendship, we ask you to hear our prayers this day and respond to them in your love. We make this prayer through Christ, our risen Lord. Let's pray together, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Father, Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Church. And may our prayers rise up to you, Lord, together with these sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mystery of your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with you. And lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, we praise you ever more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order passing away, a universe cast down is now renewed. An integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending forth the power of your Spirit, like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness and then gave the chalice to his friends and said, take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In 
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held each one of us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and the blood of Jesus, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Nicholas, our Bishop, and with all who serve and lead your people. And remember also, Lord, our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the holy women and holy men who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With great confidence, we pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but look on our faith, the faith of your holy people, the church and graciously grant us peace and unity that are in accord with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And here and at home we offer to one another a sign of Jesus' peace. Peace, Michael. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And happy we called and invited to the Supper of the Lamb.
for we know who heals our souls. Hallelujah is our song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen over all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Jesus, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, be with spirit. and may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. A special thanks to Father Jim O'Shea for taking time out of his very busy schedule as provincial to uh, celebrate with us today. Special thanks to our friends here at the Immaculate Conception Parish uh, who always are willing to help us and, and enter into prayer with us. And a special thanks to our sponsor of this Mass, uh, Josephine Giordano. Uh, to my recollection, this is at least the third year that she's chosen to uh, celebrate her birthday with us as a sponsor of the Mass. So, Josephine, again, a very happy birthday to you. Uh, many blessings today on your birthday and always. Uh, and please know of our gratitude for helping us to, to bring this Sunday Mass to many people each and every week. So thank you for your help. Uh, as uh, I said uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, we're coming to the end of uh, this uh, volume of the prayer guide, the 93rd volume of the prayer guide. And next week we start with 94. If you haven't received it yet or if you've never received it, please contact us so that we can make sure we get one out to you in the mail. Have a great week, everybody. And until we meet again next Sunday, may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in your heart. The proceeding was a paid program for Passionist Communications.